Diane Neal. Here's a I am Diane Neal, your host, and with me as always is my trusty producer, friend, and guy that takes me on a tour of his house every time we record because we move from room to room. Danny. <laughs> I've only I only went to two rooms this time, but hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> yeah, it's always hectic. Like I'm always like, why does it why is it not working down here? This oh, you get you get hectic and I just give up. I mean look at me. I'm I'm <laughs> I put I I was running I just I spent like the like one of those giant autumn walks in New York back from where I was to where I am now through Central Park, the leaves changing and everything else. But it was like a really long walk and I've been gone all day. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna put on some chinoiserie. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, wait, Danny, are we taping? He's like, yeah. And then I'm like, I should probably put clothes on. Decided not to. And then... <laughs> um, <laughs> So for anyone listening, uh, Diane is completely naked right now. Totally naked. It's a little weird for Danny and yeah. for my, my dog and his dogs, but it's all right. My dog ran away. Oh no, my just... gosh. <laughs> Do you know what it's like? I'm so pale, especially like when I was skinny because then I was pale and small, but I'm so pale that when I go to like beaches, it's like someone just left a swimsuit on the beach. Like no one can see me. It's just pupils, nostrils, and a bikini. So I think of like me naked hurting your dog is just like the blinding light, you know, that just of the, the pastiness, the blinding light. Yeah. That would just drive, just drive your dogs away. <laughs> just drive yeah. them away. Okay. So this is what I was talking about. Okay, so one of my one of my friends, Julie, who she's awesome. I don't, she's first of all, she's hilarious, right? So we're the, I'm a year older than she is, but she is hol- so hilarious. I can't even tell you. She's super smart. Um, she's really nice. Like just one of those people that's kind of shi- I always call them shiny people. Like they're everything, and. It's really weird. Julie, instead of like going to work, um, she has these amazing kids. So she stayed home. She was a stay at home mom. And it's like Mm -hmm. such a rarity in New York. Like, I'm sure there are moments when, you know, because like she's surrounded by all these business women and stuff. So she keeps joking and saying she's having this midlife crisis, which is ridiculous, right? Because what she did was like more important than any job in the world. Like, she brought up like two human beings are going to be added value to the planet. And, Mm -hmm. um, but so she keeps calling it her midlife crisis. So she showed up the other day with bangs, which I was like, Oh, like it was really fun. And like, like everyone on earth mentioned her bangs. It was like, Oh man, bangs, 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 bangs. (laughs) And then I was like reading in Vogue two days ago, like bangs were the hip new thing. So I was like, Oh my gosh, you beat Vogue to it. Oh my God. (laughs) Like go 45. You know, like it was hilarious. And um, anyway, so she just texted that she was out surfing all day. And, nice. and I'm like, I'm like, ah, we are rock white. I got super excited. I'm like, you have no idea. It's my favorite thing before I got fat. <laughs> it's like <laughs> what I did every single day, every single day. But now I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to talk to her and find out. I need to know everything. I need to know like what size board she was on, what she was riding, and what she was doing, what size what she she had on, if she was wearing booties yet, if it was cold enough for that. I just need to know everything. Is there anything like that that you have, Danny? That like you get so excited about that if you if you find out someone else likes that thing, you're just like, oh gosh, I have to like talk to you about it right now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, I have, like, a lot of random little things like that. Like, um, urban design. Anytime someone's like, we need more bike lanes, I'm like, yeah! And I I will totally go on my tirade on how I want more bike lanes in my life. Uh, Public transit, uh, design, um, audio. There's so many little things that I just can go on super long tangents about. Um, But most people don't find them interesting, you know? Yeah. So when I find someone that's like super into that, it's just like too like mind melding. Danny, 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 you are in the wrong. <laughs> you are in the wrong 
you're in the wrong city. Okay, so one of my favorite, <laughs> I, I have like a few, like not in that gross, creepy old man sort of way, but like I have friends that are like that are your age or like in their late twenties that like I've known since they were lots of them were like teenagers. And, mm-hmm. you know, they just needed some sort of adult figure when they got to New York, which I totally understand. It was just one of those things. Like, so I'm like their weird yeah. aunt. Anyway, <laughs> um, so one of them, Alexis, who is amazing, if you, she is such a public transportation. I mean, she works in like public <laughs> policy, working on public transportation. Her Twitter handle is bus slut. I mean, she's <laughs> like... <laughs> She, I think like, I saw a channel, but I don't think it was on YouTube. Oh my gosh, it was like the no. funniest. She, she, the, like she and her fiance met each other on Twitter over their love of public transportation, <laughs> and have become That's these awesome. bike riding freak people. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait for the day when we're all in the same room because, like, I love it. It's gonna be like me with Julie freaking out right now, going, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> She's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know, like, I'm going to get to watch all of you guys freaking out about transit oh, yeah. systems. Well, I mean, that's why, like, that's why I was so excited to go to Chicago, because we were able to go from Denver go, all the way Chicago. to Chicago. I'm sorry, that can only be <laughs> like, Every time I hear the name Chicago, I'm like, Chicago, but in that old shaky way, like, I've got Parkinson's, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, not. Like, like what was it? Audrey Hepburn in the Twilight Years, you know, like, you know, I, I, no, that was Catherine, oh, yeah. Catherine Hepburn. I, Chicago. Oh, yeah, like that transatlantic accent. That's right. Okay, sorry. I mean, okay, but that's why you were <laughs> to Chicago. Oh, yeah, because we went all the way from Denver to Chicago and back, and we never drove, like, we're in a car one time. Which I was like, that's so cool. And same when we went, when we took the Amtrak train up into the mountains, which, yes did turn out to be a nightmare <laughs> because did, the Amtrak even, train yeah. on the way back was like, I think it was like eight hours late or something. And then Edgar had work the next morning. And then we got back so late that, that the light rails weren't running anymore. So we got stranded because we had our bikes and yeah, it was like a big thing, but it was fun. Chicago. That's all I have to say. Sorry. <laughs> Do you know what I was thinking about while you were talking? Oh, what? Surfing. Sorry about it. I'm like, I wasn't listening at all. I'm so sorry, Danny. Like, you're you're so- all good. No, don't. I be think fooled. that's what happens to most people when they think about trains and buses. They're just like, no. I lo- I I also I love but surf. Trains. So surfing is your thing that like you can vibe with anyone on. Oh my gosh, it's just because it's the it's the greatest thing in the world. But also, yeah. I will say this: trains are really cool. I am dying to do the Trans Siberian Express. It's like one of the great train oh, rides. Yeah. Just, yes, like so there are a few, and it like goes. <clears throat> oh my gosh, it, I think it goes from like Beijing, but it stops in like Ulaanbaatar. I mean, like. How often do you get a ham, mm-hmm. Mongolia? And then it just right. goes, I think it ends in St. Petersburg. But um, how groovy would that be? That would be amazing. Um, although I'm not sure being in Russia these days is a good idea. But maybe after. There's that. There's that. Yeah. There is yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. But there, there is so many, like, Damn. it's crazy how expensive trains get, too. Oh, my gosh. So um, before... I was pobrecita. I <laughs> good Spanish. Um, I I would spend like <laughs> um, I would spend I think fifteen hundred dollars on like one of the little private bedrooms, like when mm-hmm. going to like North Carolina to see. Oh, nice. Aaron. Yeah. And, on the Amtrak? Yes. And and like that's an obscene amount because like a regular ticket's like fifty two bucks or something. And I'm yeah, you know. Wow, if only I'd known. Um, so anyway, it was really so, fun. And I still I stole I like I would take all the toilet paper and everything because there's the world's tiniest bathroom in there. It's like it's like smaller than a plane bathroom. Yeah. 
It's yeah. almost like a cabinet it's that tiny. becomes a bathroom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it comes with all of its own stuff and towels and things. I didn't take it. That's interesting. Towels. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to do the overnighter, but it is a little it is a little steep, right? To get one yeah. of the rooms. Yeah. yeah. So more than you think. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta save up some money. But probably next time we go to Chicago, we might do that. Chicago. Chicago. Um, do you know what else I'm I'm angry about? What? What really know. grinds your gears, Diane? I don't know what was the first thing. Okay, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and you know what it is? It's idiot people, Danny. It's idiot people. Okay, so uh, <laughs> last night... <laughs> Kanye, the artist formerly known as Kanye. Now known as Ye. Is he Ye or Ye? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I guess it's Ye. I've only they call him Ye, right? So it's like Ye. I assume. Like you'd, you'd be knee if you got rid of the first part, right? So you'd be like knee. And it'd be weird if I called you knee. You know, it's like, no, he's knee. <laughs> Really? <laughs> it highlights it highlights the stupidity of his new nickname. Oh my gosh! Right? <laughs> okay. So anyway, he so apparently quick. I, these are all things I didn't know until last night. I didn't know he was going by Ye. Yay! And I didn't know Chris <laughs> Cuomo was back on the air and he's got a show again. <clears throat> um, and I didn't know there was a channel called News Nation. Okay, so these are three things that coincided that I found out all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it was an interview that Chris Cuomo was doing with Ye. And um, I'm not gonna lie to you, it was insane. But there was one part that made me laugh so hard. I'm just gonna see if you can. Can I, can I play a little play? I don't know how to do it. For oh no! That was just a picture of Charlie. Good thing it wasn't anything weird. Okay, hold <laughs> on. Uh, can you imagine? <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, that would have been the funniest thing to happen on the it show. Is. Okay, you can't. And I imagine. would not have cut it out. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like you couldn't have. Like it would have been. Right, where did this just go? Where did this just go? Okay, hold on. Is it? Come on. No, that's not it. Where is it? Where? What? Okay, 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 okay. My Jewish managers, by my, by my Jewish lawyer, by my Jewish accountant, your lawyer, and your accountant, and your lawyer. Okay. Okay. So if you can't hear what's happening, right? He's saying that Is he going Jewish... on an anti Semitic rant? Yeah, but that's not even the point. The point he goes he goes, My Jewish lawyers and my Jewish accountants try and killed me. And then Chris Cuomo asks, Wait a minute, your lawyer and your accountant tried to kill you? And he's mm -hmm. like, Well, well, not not specifically the accountant. That's the funny part, right? <laughs> like, he totally backtracks, like you know, what the, what, what, on the that, wrong side, yeah, on the wrong part the, of it. Not specifically the accountant, you know. So like the accountant's <laughs> off the hook now, right? Like the accountant's <laughs> off the hook. That's the funny part, right? Because it's it's hilarious. Okay, so yeah. I posted that last night. The amount of hatred, Daniel. Uh huh. Oh my gosh. Okay. It was either people who were like, stop making fun of Kanye and his mental illness. All right. Or, um, don't make fun of black people. White people are the real killers. Okay. Um, or it was like Kanye's an idiot and blah, blah, blah. Or wow. it was, are you dumb? The wreck of labels try and own people. Look what happened to Prince. Okay, so I'm just going to answer. And I'm talking, there was like a copious amount of all of these. And we're going to cut wow. this and put this on the Instagram so people can okay. understand. Okay? Yeah. Okay. 
I'm going to play it one more time, just so. You got you to pay attention and listen. Don't you do it. <laughs> Lock me out of my own phone. Okay, here. Okay, hold on. Hold on. My Jewish managers, by my, by my Jewish lawyer, <laughs> by my Jewish accountant, your lawyer, and your accountant, your accountant your life. Life. My, 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 no. He said, not, not specifically the accountant, but there were many. <laughs> <laughs> not, not specifically the accountant. That's the joke, okay? No one in the world, first of all, okay? No one's making fun of anyone with mental illness. In fact, actually something very bizarre happened during that show. Uh, out of nowhere, Chris Cuomo goes like, I take my antidepressant every day. And I was just like, oh, all right. <laughs> I'm like, just toss it out there. Nobody's making fun of the mentally ill. Okay, number two, no one's making fun of black people. And yes, white people are the real killers. Every, every like, I think I hope most people know that. Yes, it's creepy right wing bigots, racists that end up murdering everyone. So that's not even in dispute, and also not what this is about. Um, what was one of the other ones, Danny? There were so many. Um, I I didn't people tell saying you. that Kanye is bad, basically. Oh, yeah. Or like, he's irrelevant. Where are you even bringing him up? And I'm just like, okay, again, not about that. It's about this thing, right? Again, once again, not, not, not necessarily the accounts. I just think that's hilarious. Okay. So not making fun of mental illness or, or Kanye, black people or white people, literally just making fun of that five seconds of television where someone is saying that his account, because I'm sure it was news to his accountant and his lawyer that they were they were threatening his life. I'm sure they thought it was the first they'd ever heard of it, right? And like, I just, I, what I picture is the account, like they're both on the edge of their couches, you know, like, what did he just say? Oh my gosh, I'm all like, we threatened his life? And then, yeah. and not, not, not necessarily the account, and the account, like, okay, okay. You know what? Like, <laughs> That's what yeah. I imagine. This drives me nuts. This started, I'll never forget. This was like 10 years ago at the beginnings of the tweet machine. And there was an ad on TV for this drug that apparently if you have this certain disease, you, when you're supposed to cry, you laugh hysterically. And if you're supposed to laugh, you start crying. And the ad was hilarious. <laughs> and, and it involved a, probably someone only in their 50s or 60s pretending to be like they're in their 80s or 90s, so like really stooped over and stuff, <laughs> and wearing a really tiny party hat. <laughs> 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 and that like, <laughs> it's, it's going to kill me. It's going to kill me, Danny. I'm going to find it. I'm going to send it to you because it's still so funny. <laughs> it's still so funny. Um, okay, so. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to see that. He's, he's like stooped over, and and he's like standing there with this tiny party hat, and and in the in a sea of of small children having a birthday party, and he's <laughs> sobbing. <laughs> he's, he's sobbing. He's sobbing. So all these children are like, yay! And he's in this tiny party hat, just sobbing. Like, <laughs> it's hilarious, okay? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So is it it's a medicine to treat that? Like when you're <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Whatever the art director was thinking. Their version of, of bringing this vision to reality was like this, like, oh, these are really happy kids, like in like bright colors. And like this drab hunchback guy playing an older guy, like, like, like with the, the world's tiniest party hat on, just like, like weeping amongst all the children playing. Like, I was like, that's. 
the funniest ad I've ever seen in my life. So I do this, I record it and then I tweet it. Holy crap. Holy crap. Daniel, everyone going like, I know someone with that disease and it's horrible. Okay, nobody's debating that that disease is horrible. <laughs> Nobody wants that disease. Nobody's making fun of that disease. I'm making fun of the commercial, right? Yeah. And there are other people who are like, it's not. <laughs> Sorry. Not even, I can't even say, it's like it's too funny. But it was the first time ever. I was like, fine, I'm going to take something down. Oh my gosh, this amount of hate. Like, if you can't understand, not making fun of the disease, not making fun of old people, not making light of any of it, not even even um, throwing shade on the advancement of medical technology that they now have a drug for it. No, just making fun of that 30 second commercial of the world's tiniest party hat on, it just like, hilarious i cannot wait to send it to you i'm so excited about this <laughs> um honestly I, yeah. I feel like twitter is one of those platforms where no matter what you post at some point you're going to get some blowback um and i have to say your twitter game is light years better than elon musk's i i appreciate that were you waving to the ghosts again <laughs> Edgar just got home. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know you can't hear me. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> um, about your Twitter, about oh, your yeah, yeah, but there are like three year olds that have a better Twitter game than Elon Musk. Right. Um, so I, I, I really appreciate, appreciate it, that you didn't. <laughs> I appreciate that low. at this point you haven't like. Uh, unilaterally decided that you have the solutions to the Ukrainian war. <laughs> oh, oh, I do. Do you know what? But this is where Elon and I differ. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I keep them to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Think of any world problem. Solved it. You know what? You gotta let them work it out for themselves. Just keeping it inside. That's all I'm doing. Touché. Yeah. Touché. So, um, you know, Elon. So what is his oh, solution Mr. for the Musk. Ukraine crisis? Uh, he basically wants Ukraine to give up large swaths of their country to mm -hmm. Putin. Right. right. And he was like, that would solve everything. It's a compromise. Mm. Um, needless to say, Ukraine did not really like that too much. No. And then it came out that he had had, allegedly, had a conversation with Putin prior to making this suggestion. So yeah, I, um, I mean that that wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. What would a conversation between Putin and Musk be like? How weird would that be? I know. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to work on that and bring it back as a one act play. <laughs> yeah, oh, we which should part, totally... wait, which part do you want? Which part do you want? Um, <laughs> gonna be Putin or Musk? I guess I'll I'll be oh, I don't know I don't know they both seem hard right? I'm not good at acting okay I'll be Musk oh my gosh okay you have to get that weird accent down <laughs> okay and then um, I'll, I'll blip Putin. are we and are I we will, doing this I'll, now I'll write a bear <laughs> no we're gonna work on this for next week we're gonna you know what we're gonna do we're gonna come up with an imaginary dialogue of what they said on the phone to each other <laughs> Because I feel like, okay, I feel like the thing about Musk, if you yeah. want to imitate him, all oh you have gosh, to do right, that's, That is... should be a whole thing. The thing about Musk. <laughs> <laughs> mm, Musk. What's the thing about Musk? <laughs> um, but all you have to do is like stutter and say really egocentric things. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like trying to hedge your egocentrism with the yeah. stutter basically quick question does yes. okay so you've got white privilege right and then you have wealth privilege when you combine the two together like an elon is it an adding kind of thing or is this like 
a square root kind of thing? Is this like exponential? Or is it just That's a good question. Ad, is it just additive? Or does it is it make you exponentially more an a-hole? Like hmm. Hmm. Mm. I think it's a I think it's an addition. Okay. Okay. So just the reason I say that doubly is yeah, because there's like there's different types of privilege, right? So like mm-hmm. white privilege is like the privilege of not automatically being assumed that you're armed when a police stops you. Um, that is very whereas, handy, by the way. That it, is like it's a really, really yeah. It's super but handy. Like, even rich people of color might still experience that, right? Um, Whereas wealth privilege is like being able to buy a social network Mm -hmm. with unrealized capital gains, but also not being taxed on those unrealized capital gains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, you can, you can have both. It's like an addition. I don't know if it's a multiplication. Yeah. Yeah. But in Elon's case, I do know that one thing that's interesting about him is how he's claimed to, like, be completely self-made. And like most billionaires, it turns out that's not true. <laughs> like, it's just like, yeah, but you know what's dumb, Danny? I bet <laughs> in their heads, they are self-made. Like, deep in the oh, yeah. noggin. They're like, oh, I did it all myself. Wait, okay, do your best, Elon. Let's just go for it now. Putin, Elon, go. The thing about rocket science is you just have to, you, you, so, so, so here's what I need to. What are you talking about, Elon? You're a very stupid man sometimes, huh? (laughs) I bet nobody has ball sack to tell you you're stupid. Well, l- 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 let's let's just let's just talk about it this way, right? Okay. I, I I currently I currently am providing all of the internet access for m- 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 most of the Ukrainian people. Um, it, if if okay. you are willing to, uh, to 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 stop the invasion of Ukraine, I uh, can 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 remove their access. Why don't you spit it out? What is wrong with you? Huh? You problem? You problem with tongue? You problem with tongue? Let's see. Let's see your tongue, boy. Let's see your tongue, boy. Yeah? You want me to I, make I, your I, country? I, Let's I, make your tongue. I, 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 I don't like be, being made fun of right now. Um, can I you, don't care. You deserve I, to be made fun of. What, what, what do I have to do to uh, keep my keep dignity? Did you come with dignity? Should I should I suggest that Ukraine give up land to you You on Twitter? You suggest that that Ukraine give up Ukraine, all of Ukraine to me. They can keep one tiny part, like one hectare. You know, only for them. You know what? They can plant a flag in it. They can plant a flag in it and say, "Hey, it was yours." You know, you can (laughs) do what you want with the hectare. That's fine. You do this. You do this, I will not have you killed with the donkey check. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think that, and, and that's a wrap. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, is that how, I, that's how I imagine our conversation did go. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> we just got really deep into that for a minute, didn't we? We just got lost. That's what it feels like. When you're bringing your, your I don't know. acting game. <laughs> By the way, yeah. are you wearing a half shirt? A half shirt? Yeah. Is it like a half shirt? Is there like a bottom part to that shirt? I can't see. Oh yeah, no, there's it's a full shirt. Oh, it's a okay. really it's a really large shirt. Okay. It's like extra, extra, I wanted a, extra large. When I lived in Japan, I wanted a tattoo like that up and down my back, but like in full color. And this was before oh, yeah. the girl with the dragon tattoo. Yeah, I just wanted. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I got this shirt at, um, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a designer company called Ross. Um, I've, I believe I've seen it in... Mm-hmm. Sundry places, 
across, <laughs> across this great land. I can't yeah. say that I've ever been in one myself, but <laughs> I'm sure it's not far in my future, Daniel. Very high end. I hope very I high end. On, on a very low budget. That's right. I can't, I'm very much looking forward to my own Tokyo tea. <laughs> yeah. They, they oh, sell tea there. Do you know that like half, <laughs> that half shirt I was telling you about that my, that my mom had on where you could like, her boob came out from under and it was just like the last thing in the world <laughs> I needed to see. Yeah. I, I finally like, cause like we finally got into it the other day and, um, which is amazing. I just let it rip. But like one of my things when I was I was being feisty, I was like, "You need to get rid of that stupid half shirt with Snoopy on it and Tweety Bird. Who gave that to you? You're both sick out the bottom. You wear it around. <laughs> Your poor mom. She's like, I didn't mean for my tits to hang out. <laughs> it's like. I would have paid to see this on, <laughs> on like, <laughs> pay-per-view. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And what was her, what did she say to you? Oh, she's like, you're so messy. <laughs> I'm like, I know. And I'm taking advantage of you because you're here and you're not messy. Like, that's been the hardest thing, Danny. <laughs> Like, and I knew it going in. I was like, okay, Diane, don't, just because you hate all that stuff and your mom does it and was really good at it and she's an anal that way. So she's going to do it whether you do it or not. Um, don't take advantage of her and just leave, leave. And I did. I do. I do, Danny. Yeah. It's always difficult. Tis. Tis, tis. Yeah. It's, it's like living with a parent, it's just really easy to go back to that time in your life where they used to take care of you. Yeah. Until it's time for you to take care of them. And then you're like, oh, man. But your mom seems pretty, uh, she seems like she's in good health still for her she age. She is. She's like, yeah, she's a, she's a spunky 75 and, you know, walks miles a day and... Gets yeah. on the roof. The nice. usual. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hopefully she'll be around a long time. And then I promised her that, like, you know, if she gets to that place where she's, she's, like, really, really not well, you know, I'm like, I love you enough to kill you. I was having so much trouble keeping that in, knowing that was coming. <laughs> Just to like, like, I was like, don't give the joke away early, Neil. Don't give the joke away early, Neil. <laughs> that was almost as bad as your barbecue joke. <laughs> what, what joke? Your uh, barbecue joke. I don't even remember the barbecue um, joke. Something about like you were visiting a certain country and oh when um, they were burning the dudes in tires yeah and um, then your reaction was like it smells like barbecue <laughs> it does it smells <laughs> real it smells but then like the tire smell would kind of t- you know it was like a but like it's when when you when you smell cooking person and, and you're like mm, it's also something you have to reckon with yourself on a very deep level that you instinctually were just like, smells amazing. You know, like, you know, like, well, did they season it or like, I, God, I just like, what a horrible way to die. Yeah. Oh yeah. There are so many ways I don't want to die. Oh yeah. I woke up with the biggest zit on my nose. Like the kind of zit that you see on the back of like a 15 year old kid at the pool. <laughs> like, like just nasty. And I was like, what? I'm going to be 46 next month. Like, I, I, why? How like, did that happen? 
Yeah, I don't get it. Well, you know what? I think the oh. older women get, the more testosterone they get. Is that true? Do you might do be you true. Think I, do you think I need any more testosterone? <laughs> <laughs> Slowly, day by day, you're becoming Neil Aquamarine. Oh my God, it's true. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get like a leisure suit. Okay, so um, I have so my question to you. Yeah. Is um, streaming services are becoming more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, What is your, if you could like, if you were president for a day and that was the only thing you cared about, what would you do to solve this dire issue? Well, it's a good thing that I'm leaving Ukraine up to Musk. So this is what I can (laughs) Focus on so focus wait, on what? something a little more important. So wait, what was the question? I I have I'm president for day, and this is all I care about. Did you say pick which streaming service? How could you? What would you do to lower the cost of streaming services? What's your wild idea? Oh, um, well, since I like Elon Musk, have solved every problem in the world. Uh, basically, I would not have so many productions because they have so many random shows that if you reduce the overhead of what you're spending making them, Mm -hmm. then you, you can pass that savings on to the customer. Okay. Okay. That's right. That's, that's what I would do because like how, how, how many of those shows, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's so so many you could live without, right? That's true. Oh yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. But okay, so I'm gonna counter this. Mm-hmm. So Netflix, when they started, they didn't have really any original content, right? No, they had nothing. They would send you DVDs in the mail. They, yeah, and they literally, well, yeah. And then when they went to streaming, they would only license other people's content. Um, but as time went on, they realized, mm-hmm. hey, at some point all the people that created this content, all the companies that own this content are going to want to start their own streaming services. So we need to start creating our own content as well. By the way, this Otherwise, is called the Sandy Crawford model. Go on. Right. So because, so basically they're like, we have to create a bunch of content. Otherwise we're going to end up in a situation where we have no content mm-hmm. or we have to pay a ton of money for the content and have to charge right. way more than our competitors. Um, so it kind of makes sense that they are creating so much of their own content. But at the same time, I do think that Netflix kind of overdoes it a little bit. Um, the other streaming services, I guess they just kind of have so, always created content. Like that's where they came from, right? Like yeah, Disney, like, like. No, well, Disney just owned a ton of content to begin. I mean, they just owned a ton and then they could add on to that. But wait, so how, how would you bring down prices of streaming services? Um, I would nationalize all streaming services. <laughs> I would take the, uh, so I would take the, um, let's see what would be the model that I would, I would take the Marxist approach. <laughs> the government now owns Netflix. And um, everybody has a right to Netflix. Does that sound like a good idea? No. No. Well, you don't think the government's good at making websites? I know. It's crazy to think this, but no. Haven't you been to the DMV.org? Oh, don't get me started. Or when Obamacare (laughs) first went online? Oh, yeah. That was a nice Madness. Yeah. Hey, whitehouse.gov is pre- is looking pretty good these days. Is it real spiffy? Yeah. Like it's like pretty nice. Is this is this all we have for today? Look at us. Look at us, Daniel. <laughs> just, talking about whitehouse.gov. Oh my god, just like like looking up random websites, just drifting off into space thinking about other <laughs> things. We are bringing our C game. <laughs> I do feel like it's a very mellow day. Mellow um, day. More so than last week, even. 
Oh my, and we were, in, we were in bed last week. I know. I yeah. Know. Well, I'm kind of recovering because um, earlier today, which I told yeah. you before we started recording, but we just had like six hours of landscaping happening what felt like right outside of our windows, which anyone that owns dogs knows that like chainsaws and bush trimmers and leaf blowers happening right outside your window is kind yeah. of going to just cause a lot of havoc. So I'm literally, I've just been literally like all day long. Um, but you know what? I do have a funny story for you. Oh, do you? Yeah. So um, for Halloween this year, I decided to go with my friend Jamie to uh -huh. um, a vampire's night at a very large gay club. Okay. And um, I had that, like this. That, do you hear that motorcycle? Is that here or is that there? I think that's where you are. Really? Yeah. That was nuts. Sorry. In New York of all places. Oh, I know the sound of anything. Um, no, it's crazy. They just, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no worries. So, um, so it was a great idea, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I had like, I was like, okay, I'm going to be a vampire. And I was like, dang, I don't have the teeth or the blood, but I do have this goth dress mm -hmm. and I do have some like black lipstick. And I was like, mm -hmm. it'll look kind of vampire, yeah. vampire y. Um, but then after putting it on, I was like, yeah, this is not working. Luckily, I bought some like fishnet pantyhose. So okay. I had like a mesh shirt. Nice. I had, basically, I, I went outside. I left the house looking like I was um, a sex worker. Currently looking for sex clients. Right. Yeah. And. Um, Love for sale. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been totally fine if I was going straight to the club. The problem is oh. it was so packed that night that I couldn't park within like two or three blocks of no. it. <laughs> like I was probably no. like a good like six blocks down. And okay, um, tell me so what you have to tell me that like I can't listen to the rest of this until I know what kind of shoes you were wearing. They were high heel sneakers. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I so they're kind of. Yeah, I imagine regular high heels at first, and I was like, I could just imagine you like hustling, you know, like trying to like, <laughs> like but like high heel sneakers, a little more stable, a little more stable, yeah, a little bit more stable, yeah. Yeah. Um, although I, I am pretty like I can walk in heels, pretty decently. Um, I mean, I can yes. even walk in heels with like the fast scoot, you know, when you're trying to get through somewhere really fast, like tick, 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 tick. yeah. Anyway. I mean, let's. I, I'll be honest. When I'm in heels, I definitely go like this. <laughs> you can hear you can see my head my hair bob it's like <laughs> no <laughs> but um <laughs> wait, wait, how'd you do it can't even do it oh my gosh it's hilarious <laughs> no so um so as I'm parking, which I didn't, mm -hmm. like, me and Jamie could have gone in the same car. Mm -hmm. We're both dressed equally provocative. And we decide, okay, maybe this, <laughs> like, we both, we're both calling each other as we're parking. We're like, maybe this wasn't a good idea to go in different cars because we're both, like, so far from the venue in opposite directions. And it's, like, clearly not a very good. So I'm in the bro part of the city now, basically. Uh oh, oh like frat I get boys. out of my car. Yeah, tons of frat boys. I get out of my car and there's like three frat boys that immediately come up to me for some reason. And I'm like, okay, this is not the part of the neighborhood that I wanted attention in. Um, and luckily they were just uh, talk like asking for directions right they're like excuse me do you know where 32nd avenue is right but you could tell they like started asking the question before they saw me <laughs> because the look on their face when they saw me was literally just like <gasps> like oh my gosh. complete and total shock um and then oh <laughs> it was the cutest thing because they're like <laughs> they had to finish it up with the sir <laughs> Do you know where 32nd Avenue is, sir? Sir? 
<laughs> like just completely <laughs> unsure. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So, oh, so of course hilarious. I responded like in a very deep voice. I was like, it's right over there. <laughs> So yeah, it was kind of fun. And then I, I got to prance down like three, four blocks before I got to like the gay area. Um, totally on my own. As soon as I hit like where it became mostly it, it's like, like, gay it was like people. a force field. You were like just like in and you were safe. Yeah. I knew I was in the moment like three girls were like, Oh my god, you look fabulous. Yep, that's and it. I was like I was like, oh. I was like, I I'm, safe. I'm inside yeah. the force field, it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it was fun. It was a good weekend. That's pretty much nice. my, uh, I like Halloween thing that I did this year. Aside from, you, of course, you know, there's the like theme. a decent amount of time until actual Halloween. Like you could fit some more stuff in. I'm pretty sure. I, I probably could. Um, you know what? I might be doing something in Philadelphia Ooh. because I am traveling to Philadelphia with my brother starting this weekend. And we're really? going to be there for a full week, pretty much up until Halloween. Ooh. So, yeah, I might have time to do one other thing. Um, we'll see. Mm. We'll see if there's any haunted houses. Oh, my. Just, you couldn't be in Philadelphia. Come to the city for the Halloween parade in the village. The, o- the only one oh. that's better on Earth. The only one that's better on Earth is West Hollywood. And I hate to give it to California mm. because I dislike California generally as an idea and <laughs> like, like <laughs> physically, metaphorically, I literally. I am not a fan <laughs> of the Golden State. I, even though I've yeah. been forced to live there on many occasions, it is not my favorite. <laughs> so, you know, I mean it when I say the West Hollywood Halloween parade is yeah. the, the tops. However, not far. West Village Halloween Parade. Like, pretty fabulous. Like, you, When is you, it? Do you know when it is? I don't know. Let me... I'm like, where's my phone? Let me find out. Okay. It's over there. That's, that's my dandy doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I got a cat and the gay gay. Goo, 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 goo. Okay. Age. Halloween parade radio. Oh, let me make sure I put 2022. I'm with the info. Search. Okay. New York's 49th annual Village Halloween Parade will take place on Monday, October 31st, 2022. Really? So, yeah. I'm leaving on the 30th. Look. Oh, come on. Look at that. I Ooh. know. I see. Ooh. I know I can't. Can you read it? I don't know if you That can does. It. Kind yeah. of, yes. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Dang. Oh, man. I didn't even have the, ha- the countdown clock. Oh. That sounds super amazing. Oh, my gosh. And the parade theme is freedom. Think of all the red, what? white, and blue. Yeah. So, like, all America, baby. I can see you as a sexy eagle. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I can, def- I can well, definitely I'm, a hot... T- I'm going bald, so... <laughs> 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 I do have these parking lots up here. I didn't... I never That's why noticed. I have to wear my hair like this, because if not, you'll see my parking lots. I don't notice anything. I don't know what you're talking about. You're just making stuff it's up. It's slowly happening. It's slowly happening. Give okay, me another so fibers. So I look like I'm my dad. S- Is he bald? <laughs> He's got a, um, a bald uh, I plead the fifth. Gotcha. Yeah. Don't. I'm, oh I'm my pulling gosh. a Trump the, on that one. The after parties at Webster Hall. Look at this. Oh, Grand Marshal 2022, the Brooklyn United marching band with surprise special guests. Wow. So, okay. So tell me then, it sounds like you know of all the Halloween happenings. What are Uh you doing for Halloween this year? I don't know. So. 
it's very, it's very different than it normally has been. So it's not like going to Heidi Klum's or something. Uh, what I'll probably do is dress up like something scary and hide in the bushes around people's houses, <laughs> in the retirement community in which my mother and I live now, like in a bad sitcom. And I am going to tempt death and fate, but not my own death, theirs, by jumping out of things and scaring them as they come back from the grocery store. And kind of just taking a gamble with what happens next. But I think you're I trying work, to, yeah, I can work trying my to way lower the I property it. costs in your area by like so. killing like six seniors. That's right. It's just gonna be like, but like, you know, but I think I could, like I could move from house to house there. There's enough shrubbery left after the hurricane. I think I could do yeah, it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that's, just, that's, that's my tentative plan. I'll, 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 I'll let you know if it firms up. <laughs> do you know what? Uh, all right. So do you typically dress up for Halloween? It is my favorite thing in the world next to yeah. surfing. You have no idea, Danny. You have no <laughs> idea. It's absolutely my favorite thing in the world. Nice. I can't even tell you. This is my favorite. Halloween is my favorite. That's amazing. It's absolutely. I mean, like, I... I, I have you ever noticed that, okay, Halloween is kind of like the liberal holiday? <laughs> Ooh, how, how so? Well, I don't know. It's weird. It's like a weird phenomenon where it seems like some holidays uh -huh. are more conservative and some are more liberal. And out of all the liberal holidays, I feel like Halloween is like the Christmas of liberal holidays, right? Right. Whereas conservative Christmas holidays, you have Fourth of July, you have Thanksgiving, you have Christmas, uh -huh. you have that's Easter. Like, yeah, that's like one Halloween. Ooh, that was my well, Halloween. That was I my... can't really see because it's all blurry oh, while we record. Oh, all right. Sadly, what is it? Describe it for the listeners. Um, that is, uh, that is my friend doll dressed as Jesus, and um, <laughs> I was dressed as an Arab because you know, and. Um, this was one of the funniest. This was, I, you were dressed as a what? An Arab. Yes. Oh. I said it. Okay. <laughs> was the, this was, <laughs> we were, we Not were a the, specific, we were the, we were the peace process. That was the costume. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's less bad than you think it is, but okay. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I appreciate that you're horrified, but he's holding lilies. This is this is us negotiating for peace. This is like, okay. what's your costume? Nice. And by the way, you may not believe me. Marcus went one year as Hans Blix. So I want. Do you know who that is? No, who is that? It's the head weapons inspector for the United Nations during the WMD crisis that led to the war in Iraq. That's, oh, wow. how gran that's how granular we get with our costumes. So yes, wow. so we, we, this is like <clears throat> Camp David Accords. This Still very much reminds me, <laughs> it very much reminds me of, um, I can't remember what movie it is, but one of Sasha Baron Cohen's movies where he tries to arrange a peace agreement between Israel and Palestine. Yes, there is, can you see that one? I see a pink dress. That's West Hollywood, man. All right. That is like, nice. that is like, okay, go on. I'm listening. I swear I'm listening. But um, he tried to tell them uh, that they both love Hamas. Hamas. <laughs> Instead of hummus. Uh-huh. Uh, he's like, you both You're love like Hamas. Hamas. Oh, yeah. that's right. That was hilarious. <laughs> It was hilarious. One of my favorite Sasha Baron Cohen moments. Just, for sure. Without a doubt. So many good ones. Yeah. So many good ones. Uh, Including yeah, I, Paula oh. Abdul eating sushi off of her gardener. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, but so <clears throat> I used to have a Halloween party so big that they close the police finally started closing down our block. Oh wow. 
Yeah, that's how much I love Halloween. Dang. Yeah, I dig it. You're loco. I know. I wish I, I wish I would have been to one of your Halloween parties. They were so much fun. Some were not. Almost all of them were. <laughs> okay, so what was the what so you gotta tell me about one of the not fun ones? Oh my gosh. Um oh when we took it like off premises, so uh one of our buddies, Aviv, if you're listening, I don't know if you remember this. Um I'm sorry. <laughs> Like if a beam's listening, I'm just totally calling her out. And we we moved the celebration to their apartment in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn, which at the time was not as cool as it is now. It was more like along the lines of like terrifying. And there ended up only being like six of us, and four of them were like extras from Law and Order that came. Like it was weird. It's like I obviously invited everybody. I just like it was weird, and then it was weird too because they're like, "Wait, the star has like four people here." <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was like that, and oh my gosh, I'll never forget this either. I remember that one of the guys' names, Nick Sakai, and I believe it was his wife had had implants put in her skull so that she could screw on horns. She was a, a Wiccan. Oh, wow. And so, like, she showed up and all of us thought she was wearing, like, a headband with... No, they were drilled into her head. So That's it was a, insane. Yeah, so it was both um, an unsuccessful party, but interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway. <laughs> I'm also... All right, so despite the fact that I love uh-huh. Halloween, I'm also one of those people that never knows what I'm going to be until the very last minute. Um, last year I actually kind of planned it out and I was this really cute unicorn. Nice. I had kind of like this bodysuit with a hood that had a Mm -hmm. unicorn horn on it. Beautiful. And that was the costume. That was a great costume. It was really tight. Yeah. The. Were your bits and pieces on display, but like not in the good way. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, you know what? I call them mini pants. Like when guys have like (laughs) spandex, like tidy things. And I'm just like, I don't want to see it. And they're like, I (laughs) no, I had the, I had the, um, enough self-awareness to know that I'm going to need to wear something sufficiently tight. Okay, Down gotcha, there. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's kind of like it, not smooth it out, smooth yeah, it out. Yeah, not quite like a tuck, but like <laughs> yeah, but just like definitely a, like a let's not a, have this in everybody's face. Yeah, type smoothing thing. situation. Yeah, just yeah. like a, yeah. where the outline isn't you know readily visible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but sadly, I was definitely not the best Halloween costume I saw that night because the best oh. one I saw was the leg lamp from A Christmas Story. I don't Good know for how. Them. Good for them. Yeah. But it was basically just a dude in a lampshade. It was Okay. Cute. That that's still pretty good though. Hold yeah. on. I'm gonna find Halloween last year. I'm gonna make you try and look at it. Um I made myself a Cardinals outfit. Like a like a full. I don't know if you can see it. You see, like it's I, very very blurry. Yeah, that's unfortunate because it's amazing. And then oh, uh, I like it kind of like a pope type thing. Yes, but a cardinal, and I sewed the whole nice. thing from scratch. And then this was I miss her so much. It's gonna make me cry. My little girl, for my little girl's last Halloween, um, I sewed her because she was such a dick and we all loved her so much i made her a momor Gaddafi costume <laughs> oh how cute i know i'm a little dictator <laughs> i miss her so much oh i know seriously yeah. what a great costume though do you know what's really funny i was sewing the shirt for her like you know the military jacket with all the patches and stuff on it. And I don't know what I was thinking, but I made it like you make it for a human. So the arms are out here instead of here where the dogs need it to be. 
<laughs> so she could only like wear it over her shoulders like a shrug. <laughs> yeah. Oh my the god. Arm holes were like totally in the wrong place. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's you. You come across some some challenges when you're making a super tiny dog Momar Gaddafi outfit. You know what happens. <laughs> It happens. It happens. <laughs> That's adorable. Oh my gosh. All right, well, Danny. Should we wrap it up? I think we should wrap it up. Oh, by the way, that's other Dan. Ooh, he's a pirate. Yeah, yeah he was. That, that one kid. I can tell. Even through the blur. Mm-hmm. Just because like I thought you were gonna say that he's a pirate or that he's gay. I was like both. You're both right on both counts. Right on both counts. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter how blurry it is from a mile away. I could like totally clock both. That's the gift you've been given. It is the gift, I've been given. <laughs> which is why, which is why I'm absolutely positive that Lindsey Graham needs to stop supporting um, anti-gay. It's he like, just needs to accept himself. Danny, dogs know he's gay. You know, like, uh, uh, they, like inanimate objects know he's gay. Like, mm-hmm. it. Do you think he? But like, here's the thing. Do you think he knows? Does do you think there's a chance he doesn't know he's gay? There's a chance. I think he's probably like knows what he likes, but mm-hmm. is like. That doesn't make me gay. That just means and has some kind of justification for it. Or he's just in so deep, he doesn't know what to do. And so he's just vowed to take it to the grave. That could be taken so many different ways. But yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was when when I was living in Milan, when I was a model back in the day, I'll never forget. There was this one dude named Alessandro. And I had seen him uh, just making out with a dude the night before. And, and I, you know, just one of those things. I'm just like, oh, he didn't know you were gay. And he's like, I'm not gay. I just f*** men. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to bleep that F word out. I've been so good at not cussing. And you're going to have to bleep that one out. But it cracked. It was like the most Italian thing I'd ever heard said. You know, like. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. yeah I'm no, not gay. I've- I just. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. I've uh, yeah. definitely witnessed one of those. I dated one of those. That was fun. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What a weird thing. I still just think it is. To- it's like, it's so random. It's just such a random thing that like, if you're into one certain thing, you're kind of obligated to announce it to everybody. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's really weird. That's true. Like, the, the, mm-hmm. It's kind of imposed on you. Like no one else has to like go around and talk about it. Like yeah, it's not really nice that yeah. You're it's kind of like just thrust on you. You're just like no, this is something you're gonna have to do. Here you go. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you don't you don't have to come out, but I would say. If you're not going to come out, at least don't be a Lindsey Graham about it, right? Right. Don't like, be don't actively those... fight against people who right. are wanting to live openly and honestly. Right. That would be my advice. Yeah. So with that said, I'm going to be Lindsey Graham for Halloween this year. Oh my gosh, are you really? I should, huh? Oh my gosh, you absolutely should. Okay, I'll be Lindsey Graham and you can be Putin. Oh my god. Um, wait, can I be can I be Mitch McConnell? <laughs> that would be awesome. I would love to see your Mitch McConnell. I'm so like, next I, week, I'm really gonna have to work on like getting, getting, <laughs> getting my chins together. Like you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I'm I've never seen you. <laughs> I've never seen you impersonate a turtle before, so this will be really I'm, interesting. Uh, you know what? And it won't be. Um, I'll send you a picture of me impersonating a turtle. I actually have a photo <laughs> of me impersonating a turtle, a real turtle. But so this will be the second time. <laughs> if I, I all right, things to send you. I have to send you that video of that old man, that tiny party had crying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and me as a turtle. Okay. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be, yeah. I'm looking forward yes. to this. Yeah. Um, also, I think I might, depending on how the Lindsey Graham impersonation goes, I might oh. just start a podcast as Lindsey Graham. 
That's a and fantastic I'm gonna it, idea. I'm going to call it the godly gaze. Can you not call it graham cracker? <laughs> <laughs> graham cracker, comma, not gay. <laughs> oh my, oh my gosh. Because he's such a cracker. He's graham. And of course he's like, yeah, I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. My dog bit me. Wow. Okay. So what's what's your button for the show this week, Diane? Give me a topic. Give me a topic, Danny. Throw, throw out something. Pretend it's like improv, but not crappy. Not crappy improv? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Give everybody a three-step guide to staying young forever during the holiday season. Is it specifically during the holiday? But it's like forever I mean, or the holiday during, season? During the Halloween season. Okay, staying young forever, but just mm-hmm. for that season or for all perpetual seasons in perpetuity? For all perpetual seasons in perpetuity, but themed Halloween. Ew. Yeah. Um, well, you've heard of the vampire facial, haven't you? No, what's that? This is a real thing that exists. I have not had one, so I might be making up how it happens, but there is one. But it's something like they take the blood out of you and they re-put your blood back in you in different places. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, so that's like the vampire facial. So I'd say yeah. it's staying eternally young for Halloween theme, definitely that. Yeah. Um Mm, I would also say uh, heavy use of sunscreen to give you that pallid look of creatures of the night that all have right. you know, that very yes. deadly skin. And my my third recommendation would be if you want a severe amount of facial scarring, what you want to do is make the cuts earlier in October around about now so that it'll <laughs> heal and be crusty nicely uh, <laughs> for your eternal look as some sort of monster that does not appear in mirrors. That's, that's some great advice. Thank I'm going to follow all of it. I wouldn't cut your face. I wouldn't recommend that to anyone, honestly, but <laughs> You just did. Nobody got your face. <laughs> you know what's dumb, Danny? That we live in a world where we actually have to say that. Let's both say it at one the count of three. Are you ready? One, yes. two, three. Nobody cut Nobody your face. Nobody cut your face. We were totally off, but that means we both said it and meant it. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, um, on that note, thank you, Danny. Thank and, you, Diane. And we'll see everybody next week. Toodles! <laughs>